Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to create an analog clock visual in our UI. Let's begin. So let's start off by making the clock in the UI. So here is my canvas. Create an empty game object to hold our clock. Inside, let's create a UI image. This will contain our clock background. Now let's add the first clock hand. It will be just a simple image, so a new UI image. This will be the clock hand. And here, let's make it a rectangle. And we're going to set the pivot on the bottom and the anchor on the middle. So we can now go into 0, 0, and we have our clock hand like that. With our clock hand set up this way, we can modify our rotation on the Z in here. And by going into the negative, we can rotate our clock hand around our clock. We need to set negative rotation in order to achieve clockwise movement. So this is the field we need to modify through code. All right, so this is the absolute basic setup. Now let's look at the code. So now in here, let's first create a private void awake. And in here, we want to grab the transform for our clock hand. So we're going to store it in here. Okay, now that we have the reference for our clock hand transform, let's go into our private void update. And here, just for testing, let's simply rotate the hand around. So on every update, we're going to set the clock hand transform dot Euler angles. We're going to set the Euler angles. As you remember, we only need to modify the Z. On the Z in here, let's make it rotate around based on the time. Time dot real time since startup. And let's multiply it by 90 up. So every real second, it will move 90 degrees. And again, in order to go clockwise, we need to go into the negatives. So based on this, we should be able to see our hand rotate 90 degrees per second, which would take four seconds to completely rotate around the clock. So let's see. And yep, as you can see, we have our clock hand correctly rotating around the clock and taking four seconds to do it. All right, so now let's go back into the code to define our time variable. So in here, how you define time in your game will depend on what you're trying to achieve. You could use something like a tick system and define how long each tick should be. Or in here, we're simply going to use a float and make one day equal one F. So up here, we make a private float for our day. This is the current day inside our game. Then let's also define a constant for how long a day is in real time. So we make a private const float and let's call this real seconds per in-game day. And we're going to define it as five seconds. So five seconds in real life will equal one day inside the game. So now onto the update. We're going to have to increase our day variable based on our constant. So we increase our day by the time dot delta time divided by the real seconds per in-game day. The delta time holds the number of seconds since the last frame. So we will have our day increase by one for every five seconds. All right, so now that we have our day variable with our defined in-game time, let's apply it to our clock. The first thing we're going to do is cap our day variable to between zero and one, which will help us keep our math simple. So in here, let's just define a float for the day normalized, and it will simply be our day plus a mod of one F. That way, when our day variable is holding something like 5.5, it will simply return 0.5. So now that we have our day normalized, we can go in here onto the Euler angles, and when using your angles, we have 360 degrees to completely rotate around the clock. So all we really need to do in here is take our day normalized variable and we multiply this by 360 F. So let's define here a float for the rotation degrees per day. And this is our math. And again, in order to go clockwise, we have to put a minus. So using this, when we are at midday, our day normalized will be at 0.5F, so 0.5F multiplied by 360 will give us 180. So 0.5F on the day normalized will correctly match up with midday. Now in here, we are trying to display a 24-hour clock, so just one full revolution per day. You could change it to a 12-hour clock just by coming in here and multiplying it by 2F, which would make it have two revolutions per day. Whatever type of clock you choose will depend on what game you're trying to make. So in here, we're going to leave it as a 24 hour day clock. So let's test our code. There it is. And yep, as you can see, the hand is going and taking five seconds to do a complete revolution. So we now have our clock fully working with one hand, which represents our hours. Now let's add another hand for the minutes. 
So in here, let's rename this from clock hand into the hour hand and duplicate it and make a minute hand. Now the hour hand will be shorter and the minute hand will be larger. Okay, so we now have a hour hand and a minute hand. Let's now back into our code. Let's rename our clock hand into the clock hour hand transform and then make one for the minute. And down here, all we need is some very simple math. So we have our code for the hour hand, which is the same. And for the minutes, the only difference is that we rotate 24 times per day. So in here, just a float for the hours per day. We have 24 hours in one day. And we're going to do the exact same thing on our minute hand and multiply it by hours per day. So just like that, our minute hand will rotate 24 times for every one rotation of our hour hand. Okay, so let's see the result. And yep, there it is. The clock is now working with both the minute and the hour hands. We can go back into our code and here easily modify the real seconds per in-game day. So instead of one day being five seconds, let's say one day is one minute. And as you can see, the speed changed accordingly. So there you go, one hour and now two hours and so on. We can also very quickly add a text component. So in here we add a new UI text. Let's say the time text. So that's our text UI object. Now let's go into the code. First grab the reference. And now on our update, all we need to do is, again, some very simple math. So we define our string for the hours string, which will be based on our day normalized, multiplied by 24 hours. Again, 24 hours per day. So we take it and we do a two string and give it the string format of zero, zero. So we always have the leading zeros. Now this in here will automatically round our number, which is not what we want. So in here, we need to do a math app dot four. So in case we end up with an hour of say 1.8, that is supposed to be our one, not our two. So we have the string for our hours. Now let's define a string for our minutes. So for the minutes, we take our day normalized multiplied by hours per day. So this will give us a number between zero and 24. We can then do a mod of one F. So now we have a value between zero and one. And all we need to do is take that value and multiply it by 60 F, since again, 60 minutes inside one hour. Then we do the same dot two string and give it two leading zeros. And again, we need to floor this. All right, so we now have both of our strings. So all we need to do is go into the time text dot text and give it the hour string plus and our minutes string. All right, let's see. And yep, there it is. As you can see, everything is increasing. The minutes go up 30, 60. Yep, 30, 60 works perfectly fine. The hour is on three, goes up, and it's now on four. And yep, correct. And again, by modifying the time scale, we can easily modify the speed of our clock. And again, it goes up into 24 hours. Okay, great. So there you have it. We created the analog clock visual in our UI. It correctly displays the hour and minute hands while having the code easy to adapt to whatever time scale your game requires. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from mntcodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.